everybody. It's a uh, Wednesday, so it's craft um, demo day, and um, I've not been as strict about starting it at 11 because it feels like I actually get more eyeballs when I don't. So when I'm a little random, um, and then starting in January, I actually have to change the timing of things. I've got a couple things that I'm doing that um, interfere with Wednesday morning at 11, so I'll be changing it. We'll probably just have a whole new schedule starting in January is what I'm thinking at this point. Um, anyway, today I, um, I was uh, putting things up on my website um, for classes. So there are classes now available for December and I'm working into January. Got some stuff coming up. Um, but one of the things I want to add is a Art by Marlene tag book. And I need to create the sample for that. So I thought maybe I would just um, have you guys tag along with me. Ah, <laughs> get it, tag. Uh, along with me while I do um, uh, the first page or two and you can kind of see maybe get inspired to come and sign up for the class because that would be fun. So it's mixed media um, but using a lot of her uh, imagery the kit that you would get includes the tag book and um, some dies and the little things to put it together. I'll show you that here. Let me just put this down. Oh no I did this wrong. Oh come on. There you go, sorry. Oh, technology. Um, let me make sure I have this set up right, correctly, I mean, so you can see where I'm working from. Okay, so in front of you, you should see the tag book and some of the Art by Marlene um, elements. So in the book uh, kit, you get um, these things and you get a lot more than this. this is, I've actually just called this down. You get something like 27, 21, something, an odd number of pages and most, half of them have tags and then there are a few that don't. And then they have the hole punches and the little uh, book, um, I can't remember what, book rings is called. Anyway, these are um, what you would use to clamp them shut. I sell these uh, in different colors and stuff, so I have lots of these if you're really a fan of them. Um, in a little bucket of the POS, the point of sale. And then I have these, um, the, it comes with these dies, so if one of the first things I'm gonna do is die cut a couple of pages. Oh, now I need to figure out how to open that, there we go. Um, so the pages are one, two, and three. You get uh, multiples of these sizes. I'm going to leave that one because that's the front page, but I am going to, let's see if I'm going to do that one, then I'll pull another one, I'll pull another one anyway. All right, so I'm going to, I don't know if you can see the way this works, but this is a, an edge die. So it's going to cut the edge and then it's going to cut these perforations out of the edge. So I'm just going to line this up with my edges of my tag. This one I'm going to do the fine edge. Um, the, because of the where the, the tab is. So I'm going to just have it try to work off of the tab. There. So I don't know if that made any sense, but you can see, oh, this isn't on. That's part of what's going on here. There we go. Uh, I'm trying to line it up so that this doesn't look weird, that section right there. So let's see if I did that. I'm going to throw it into my platinum machine. Everyone knows I love these machines. They are work horses. They never stop. Erga. Oh, boy. This is very thick paper. I'm going to have to stand up to crank it through. Oh, I can't wait till my switch machines show up. Oh, so here's something you can see. Um, it didn't really, uh, you know, um, go all the way through, so I'm going to have to run it through again. should be slightly easier, and I'm just going to run it back and forth a couple times to see if I can't get that through there. Um, oh, I think so. I think it worked. Oh, but I also got a little bubble from my tape. That sucks. So, it helps to have a little pokey tool. And like if you're really um, <laughs> a fanatic, you can save these little dots and put them in a shaker card. Spritz them with a you know shiny spray. So um, I'm not gonna freak out about 
the, where the tape pulled this apart. This is like a, I want to say it's almost like a watercolor paper. It's very thick. It's got a little tooth to it, and um, but it also has a coating. So that's what got pulled up there. I'm not going to freak out, except that I don't like bubbles. So I am going to pop it <laughs> and peel it off because I'd rather have what the paper underneath does with my mediums than have things hanging off. So there you go. This is what a live video is all about, watching me there. I much prefer that and having those two textures together at once than worrying about, um, than, than having a little bubble. Ooh. Genuinely. All right, so I'm going to mitigate how sticky this tape is. This is the best tape ever. Uh, I want to say it's by Spellbinders. And now I'm going to do this one, and I'm just going to bring it in about halfway and I'm going to see where that edge is. It's here and here. So I'm just going to line those up so they kind of equalize. And again, put it through my machine. I want to make sure that any paper that was left from the um, previous die cutting is pulled off your platform. Otherwise, it's just going to impress itself into your project, which just kind of sucks if that happens when that happens. Now, I am wondering, <laughs> the table's shaking the, the die machine, but I'm wondering if anyone is, um, actually knows that I'm live because um, I haven't gotten the thing saying that, I, that craftiness is live yet. I wonder if anyone else has. So you can see that this one creates a little, you know what I just realized? I'm kind of doing this backwards. So now I have two and I did do them kind of backwards because really you want them on top of each other like that so you can see the the layers. So I'm going to do this last one. I'll go there. I'm going to leave that one as the cover which means I'm going to do this one to be behind oh, what am I talking about? To be on top of that one. Never mind. I'm doing it right. <laughs> That's going to be my cover. I'm not going to touch the cover. It's going to be completely square. So the first one when you open this will be this one, which I want it to be the shortest. So, and this is the one I haven't done yet. So I'm going to put this one here. Take that tape. Part of what's happening with the tape is the pressure from the machine. Because this paper is so thick, it's really adhering the tape to the tape paper. So if I thought about it with this one, if I had taped it from this side onto the platform maybe, I wouldn't have had that issue, which is what happened with this side. I did it on the other end. All right. Hopefully you understand, understand what I'm talking about. Okay, come on. Okay, so I guess the notification went out. We'll see who shows up. All right. So for the most part, I'm going to be using Art by Mar Marlene imagery, but um, for the backgrounds and stuff, I'm just pulling from my stash. I'm not quite sure for the class, um, when it comes to oh, pricing it, sometimes I don't know whether I should price it with everything you need and just make it a little expensive, or if I should give you options to bring things you might already have at home. For instance, a lot of you already have colors that work that are, you know, like, um, this didn't quite cut through all this way, so I'm going to reestablish it and do it again. Um, a lot of you have colors that will work from other brands like Dina Wakely or Kim Holtz or um, just colors in your stash, you know, like Martha Stewart Paints has um, some of the colors that we're going to be using. So, you know, I could say you get this, this, and this, but bring light pink, a purple, a yellow, or I could say it's more expensive and, and you get the paints that would go with it. If you have an opinion, let me know because I listen to you guys. 
And I know that I have both camps out there. I know I have people out there who are like, just give it all to me. I don't want to think about it. I just want to show up and do the project. And then I also have people who say, I have so much. I don't need that. Just wanna, I just want the basics. Let me know which one you are. I could have run through that through again and gotten a better result here if I, if I were to take the time. Part of me needs to get my glasses on. So I'm just gonna, don't worry, I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch me do the whole book. For one thing, I want you to take the class, so that wouldn't make sense. But um, I'm gonna do these three pages that I've just done. So you can see kind of what will be involved. Now, all of these things I, I sell, so you can always just come and get them too. And you're like, I have to do this now, because you get so inspired, right? That happens. So there are my three pages, as, as they were. One, two, three. Mm, I could have cut that one a little closer, not gonna worry about it. Lesson learned. Those are the three dies. And you know, you're gonna see this imagery in her um, stuff throughout uh, the, the books that she has because, um, and her rub-ons and her stamps, you're gonna see some, you know, repeats because that's basically, these are all her images. So you're gonna see those dots and the flowers and all that. Okay, stop babbling. Okay, I did grab a couple of her Pencils. I'm going to start with this one. And that's another thing. Do I include the stencils? Do you guys want the stencil? Or do you want to look how pretty that is? I'm going to use this one on the big one because. And I'm going to start with some pencil, stencil, uh, well, paste. I'm going to start with some paste. This is modeling paste from Liquitex. I'm using a tool. Um, it's called a spatula. <laughs> you can get them at most home goods stores. Um, I just wanted to show you this because they're actually great if you don't have a squeegee, which I really love my squeegee. If you've been to any of my classes, I have made you use a squeegee and I've talked about how much I love them and uh, I really recommend them as a tool. But if you don't have one, but you do have an old spatula with a straight edge that you are willing to sacrifice, then that works too. Ooh, ooh. Got some good texture going on here. I am gonna, before I heat dry it, I'm gonna clean off the edge a little bit so it's not chunky. I'm not, I fold over my wax paper when I have, you know, a mess on it that I don't wanna end up dipping into accidentally. You can see that I had I had some product on something. It looks like maybe uh, um, I had some. What is that? Oh, that's the paper peeling up. Oh, you guys know how I don't like that. Um, it looks like I had some magical shaker powder on something, and that it is blooming in the moisture of the paste. That happens with me because I don't clean my tools. It's part of what I enjoy about the process. You all know that. And let's see. Make sure I haven't missed any comments. Hi, Yasmin. All right. Now I'm going to add. So I have some colors here that um, I haven't really talked about recently, but I do carry them. This is the Liquitex Acrylic gouache and um, also their soft body acrylic and I can't remember now which one I have in the I think it's this one no I think it's this one I have the soft body acrylics but these are um, just you know liquid paints basically and they come in this nice little tube and you can put them down you can see that they go down soft body means that they have body which means so they're not fluid um, but that they um, They'll soften, so they won't, they're not like a texture paste. They won't stay like that. So I'm just gonna rub this around a little bit. So these um, high quality acrylics will uh, extend. 
So basically when I've added water on this one, I've, I'm extending it. So now it's going to last, uh, you know, the color is going to spread out really well because those high quality ones have a lot of pigment in them and that's what they do. Okay, so I'm going to throw down some of this paint. She says, nope, she is not. That is dry, dry, dry. So I guess I'm going to do this one instead. This one I'm going to do, and I picked these colors up out of the um, color palette from the paper, from the Art by Marlene papers. So if you're wondering how I chose <laughs> this particular set of paints, I looked at the papers and thought, this would look good. So now I'm just playing around with adding color and uh, creating a textured background. You all have seen me do this before, it's nothing new. Um, I'm use a little distress spray here. This is a, a stain, so it's going to be a little transparent, but my, I'm going to flood so that it goes into the valleys of the texture. And then I'm hoping what it does is move around the, all of this is acrylic so far that's on here. That was a watercolor that I just put down. So I'm hoping that moves around on top and that, that color that I put down already pops through. It toned it down a little bit, which is necessary. And now it's going to interact with that paper that was left from the stencil underneath. Hopefully we'll get a little outlining. Nothing like watching paint dry. Now the point of this is not for me, uh, this isn't art journaling in the way that, you know, I could keep going with this and if I were art journaling I would and I would make it super chunky and super um, textured, but this I'm just going for a background effect, so I'm not going to um, spend a lot of time on this, but each page is going to have its own, its own tone. So this uh, corner ended up a little blank, so I'm just going to spritz that with that paint, or the Distress ink. Get that color in there. It's not interacting, it's interesting. You can see where the paper, the coating had pulled up, and um, the paper underneath is interacting differently from the paper on top. It's almost like it had a Yupo finish on the top. Not interesting. So, okay, this isn't perfectly dry, but one thing I would like to do is um, reestablish a little bit of the orange, though it's still very present on the piece. Just gonna, and I'm using my Fine Art Brayer, which has a little bit of a rubbery texture, which I'm finding I like a little more. Anyways. All right, so this is my... Um, first page. Hi Lois! Sorry I got a little behind on my comments. So what's fun about the Art Mar by Marlene stuff is that she has um, these Revon transfers. That was one thing you'll get in the kit. And then these um, paper elements, and that's the other thing you'll get in the kit. So we can look at the book in two ways, um, like this, or like this. Just 
gives us a couple of options. So, you know, if I do it like this, I have more room for an element like this um, cheerful image here. Right? Or, let me get a couple of um, sheets of the same image. Oops, I managed to get those both at the, out at the same time. And you know, how, depending how persnickety you are, you might want to spend a little second trimming these little bits off. Ooh, do I not have a pair of scissors handy? Oh, of course not. All right. Well, so like that's cute, but then that would also be cute, you know, sideways. Let's see what else is going on here. We've got some fun little elements like this. Again, it, the more you group things, the more related they look. And then, let's see. Looks like it didn't come with a stick, which is unusual. Usually they give you something to rub it with. The back page is... I'm going to need a pair of scissors. scissors, scissors, scissors. So, I like this one. If you never try, you never know. I've come to really, really believe that. <laughs> okay, so the whole point of this is let's just uh, say that I'm building a, sorry, let's just say I'm building a um, inspiration book. So I'm just looking to put down things that inspire me on each page. So that's that's basically what I'm going to look at. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put down these elements, and I could use glue or tape. Actually, I'll use glue at this point. I'm feeling more gluey. You can see how all these images relate to each other. This looks, you know, similar to the background. And then my lady. And I know that I'm going to have to trim some of her off, so I'm going to trim the bottom half, this little bottom bit. Okay, so there. And now, <laughs> okay, my fingers get my fingers to work. Let's see how this works on this texture. Okay. And then really all you need is something, it could be almost anything, to rub that rub on off of its backing. And then, you know, these are all little decals. And so when you peel off the backing, even if it's not completely adhered everywhere, you should find that it will weave itself down. Now, I said that and it wasn't completely true. I wanna get that little nugget right there. It doesn't want to. The thing, if it hasn't adhered, you can just put it back down again and try again with the paper. There you go. And you can see it coming off. You can see the bubble of it releasing from the paper. So remember when I was a kid and rub were popular, they were not nearly this high quality kind of junky, junky stuff. 
can't remember what I used them for, but I distinctly remember using them on things. Maybe to create like posters for homework? I don't know. It does not want to come off. Alright, so what I'm going to do is pull this off and I'm going to dry that spot. And then I'm going to get it crispy dry. And then I'm going to come back and see about fixing this piece. Boy, it really is not wanted here. Actually, you know what? Try it this way. Nope. I am going to fix that in another way. So here's the thing, this set comes with alphabets, and one of the alphabets is a pretty close match. So I'm just going to take the L, <laughs> there you go, voila, solution, please work. Something about the spot on the tag is not letting it release. So, with that in mind, I am going to. What am I going to do? I'm going to paint that. Well, I'm going to dry it a little more because I think that might be the issue. Oh, live, live videos. This is what happens. and dry and then I'm going to oh, here. this is the orange that I've been using and I'm just gonna dab it on there and then I'm gonna dry that to hopefully give it a little surface to grab, grab onto okay let's find that L and see if that, that fixed it Ta-da! There you go. <laughs> try, try again, Inherit. You just proved your point. Um, so, page one. Uh, it won't be page one in the book because it's actually the page that comes under that and comes under that. I'm wondering if I have time. Um, maybe what I'll do is put down another layer of texture on this other tag and just. Uh, Get that started because I need to do this regardless. So I'm going to watch a little bit more. Here's another stencil I'm going to use. I'm going to get a little more wax paper. Remember, if you like your wax paper after you've gotten it all painty, then keep it. And since I've decided to go sideways, I'm going to put this one. This one has a direction, so I'm going to go sideways with it. And this time I'm going to use a little colorful texture paste. This is um, one of my texture pastes that I made at the beginning of COVID while I was here by myself wondering what to do with my life. Um, and I made a bunch of texture paste. Still have a on the back burner plan to maybe develop them as a, as a product. But um, the other idea is just to teach you guys how to make them for yourself because they are fun. They're literally just texture, um, mediums mixed with pigment and then this one has ended up getting into the nooks and crannies of the um of my die cutting so i'm just going to scrape that a little bit yeah there, got that off 
Okay. I'm gonna work right up till I knock, lock, uh, unlock the door. So you've got me for another six minutes. So this is my Liquitex acrylic inks. These are liquid acrylics. So um, I'm going to put them down. They're fluid. And um, I'm going to spread it around with my... Ooh. Let's see what I get. And because they're acrylics, they will... Um, whew, I made a right old mess. So that's interesting. I actually interacted with the... Um, texture paste I had down. So now you can't tell that that was yellow. Yeah, a little bit. You can tell a little bit. But because these are acrylics, they will dry permanently, and so they will not rehydrate when I use um, another liquid on top. It's one of the reasons I like them. But you know what? Before I finish this, I'm going to just take a second because look at all this juicy paint sitting on this here. And I have these other tags just sitting around doing nothing. So I'm just going to use some of these tags. This is the one I'm going to use as the front page. And I'm just going to pick up the mess a little bit and let these dry on their own some somewhere. Ooh, that went a long way. So if you're wondering about why I carry Liquitex as well as all of these other brands, there, right there, that is proof in the pudding. It's the how far you can extend these high-end brands. In the end, I think you get more bang for your buck, even though they're more expensive, using these brands and like the golden brands versus some of my designer paints, which I love, but don't have nearly the pigment mode. All right, go back to this. Look at that, that turned out pretty. Oops, now we have three minutes left. It's just soaking in a little bit. Something wrong with that. I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna do both sides. Probably will because, you know, that's the kind of person I am. I actually just love that just by itself. So cool. Look at that ruggedness I got out of that. Um, so let's see. Let's start this time. Believe you can and you're halfway there. Oof, I need that one right now. So this is auditioning, spending a minute um, deciding where I'm going to put stuff versus just plunking it like I usually do when I'm, or I often do when I am just uh, art journaling. I'm plunking a little bit because that wasn't exactly where it was before. And this cheerful person's going to go down. Let's see if we have more luck with this one. Believe you can, and you're halfway there. Now, say I end up messing this up and the, the rub doesn't come off properly. One thing I can do is just print it onto a piece of paper, hand print it, or you know, just create another thing that I then put over top of it. So I can cover up the mistake and the mess it makes and still get my 
my, my encouragement. Oh, this one's actually working really well, so I don't have to. Yeah, look at that. There, two pages. And that one took me four minutes. Five minutes. Okay, so that's one and two ready to go. I haven't done the backs. Like I said, I think I know what I'm going to do for the backs, and that's I'm going to get some of the papers that Mar uh, Art by Marlene puts out, and I'm going to just back them with her papers. And that way I don't have to worry about ruining my designs that I've already got going here accidentally. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. I hope that was fun to watch. I hope that uh, that sounds like an interesting class. Thanks, Lois. Sorry I didn't see the comments as they came in for some reason. Um, but I'm pleased with it. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you're inspired. And um, like I said, the class will be in December. And uh, the kits are here if you want to do it before that. Um, so hopefully I'll see you in the store uh, today or tomorrow or this weekend sometime soon. All right, take care, everyone.